So within the crux of your exam, it's going to be broken up into three complexities of questions. There's going to be simple familiar questions, which make up 60% of the weighting of your exam. So these are the sort of questions that should be simple and should be familiar to you. And the next part of the exam is 20% complex familiar, right? Where these are the sorts of questions where they are challenging and you've probably looked at them in class at some point. There is 20% of complex unfamiliar style questions. Given the name, they're complicated, they're complex, and they are unfamiliar. What do these three sorts of questions and the complexities look like? How can I familiarize myself with them a little bit? And how long should I be spending on each of these questions? So we're gonna start off with the first question, which is simple familiar. Keep with good a question, it is a simple familiar. It is a hyperbola question, and it should take you about four to six minutes. So pause this, put a stopwatch on, and off you go. Okay, so there we have got the solution laid out. What we also need to do is we need to state the domain and the range. Before I do that, I just want to highlight this point here is that even though we're dealing with f of x, fx is just y, right? So they're just, they're really, they're interchangeable. fx just means this thing is a function. Now with the domain, with the domain and range. Okay, so just having a look at the graph, the domain is the input values that you can put into this function. Here we can see that you can put everything into the function except x being equal to zero. That's an asymptote point. So that means you go from negative infinity all the way through positive infinity, excluding the point zero. Similarly goes for the range. You can include any point. Um, any point can come out of this function except for the point y being equal to negative one. So the range is everything from negative infinity to positive infinity except for that point negative one. So that is a simple familiar question. Moving on to something uh, more complex and familiar. A question that looks somewhat challenging, right? Find the equations of the circle, which touches the y-axis, has a radius of five, and passes through the point to six. So this one should take you about eight to 10 minutes. So again, pause it, put a stopwatch on, and give it a crack. Okay, so just before getting into this one too much, I'm just gonna highlight this point here. Find the equations. That's gonna imply it's more than one. Um, I know that the radius is five, which is very nice. And I've got this point here. When X is equal to two, Y is equal to six. And not to skim as by here, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna pluck this bit out as one in yellow. The circle touches, the circle touches the Y axis. It means it hits it once. Right, so if we were to just do a quick visual, and this is this helps, this will help. Right, here we can see it goes through the point two six. This is absolutely no sketch. Right, two six, just to get a visual of what's going on here. It's going to go through this point. It's got a radius of five. So we know this circle is in the first quadrant. Right, that's really important, and it touches the y-axis. So it's going to have to touch it some point around here. So we've got a circle that might look something like this, maybe. Possibly, we might have a circle that looks a little something like this. Okay, either rule is going to be fine, but we're going to have two circles that come out here because it's, it's just going to skim past um, the y axis. So I'm going to hit it once. Once. Okay, so this is what it implies. Okay, so we start off with the general form of a circle, and I'm just going to well, I'm going to use the fact that I've got the radius to be 5, so that's 5 squared, right? And I'm just going to use this first bit of information here. I'm going to consider the fact that when x is 0, y is y. And I'm going to see if I can hunt down some solutions here. Okay, so all I've done here is I've just dealt with some brackets. I've just expanded some brackets, but it's really important to um, notice here, right, is that we're going to have some sort of a power parabola come out of here, right? We've got y squared, I might just say it's one y squared, subtract uh, 2by, right? Uh, plus a squared, 
plus b squared. And if I'm setting it equal to zero, we'll go subtract 25 uh, equals zero. Okay, and so here we can see we've, we've actually got a parabola where y is our unknown um, the prime numeral. However, it touches the circle. Therefore, it's got one solution which implies that the discriminant is equal to zero. All right, that's, that, that's, that's what this tells us. So using this logic, this is A, this is B, and this is C. And A squared and B squared, well, A and B are just constant terms, so they're just gonna be numbers, right? And we know the discriminant is equal to B squared minus four AC. And the discriminant is going to be equal to zero. So let's see if we get any solutions here. Uh, so just dealing with uh, simplifying this expression here, we can see this, there's going to be some nice stuff happening. 4b squared, uh, subtract 4b squared. So they're gone, which is just ever so nice. Minus 4a squared plus 100. So we can, we can solve this a squared value here. Okay, uh, so we get a is equal to plus or minus five after all that business, which is very nice because that is actually a uh, center point, right? That's what those um, a and b, that's what a and b is, right, for the circle. So we need to interpret, well, is it is a five or is a negative five or is it both, right? We, we've got a solution, this always happens. We use quadratics to get a solution within something like circles and now we need to analyze our solution, right? Here, I know that a, a cannot equal negative five, okay? And that's because I know that my circle, referring back up to this diagram here, my circle is in the positive quadrant because it goes through that point two six. So we reject, reject, right? Therefore, a is equal to five, very nice. We've got something that looks like this now. Now, I'm gonna use my next bit of information here, which is the fact that it passes through the point two, six. Uh, and now I'm just gonna simplify this expression along as much as I can. And again, uh, here we get a quadratic in terms of B. We can uh, factorize this as B minus 10, B minus two equals zero. So we get B equals 10 and slash or B equals negative two. We've got B equals positive two. And now here we've got a little bit of interpreting to do, right? This is the uh, center point for the Y value. So I'm just I'm gonna go up and I'm just gonna do a little bit of a check here. That means that, well, if it was two, it could kind of line up roughly around here and 10 would line up roughly around here. So that, that should kind of make sense given that, you know, A is equal to five, which is our center point along here. So again, this is, that's not a sketch, right? That's just, that's a little visual to help you, okay? But uh, that's nice. We're actually gonna accept both solutions. And it also kind of emphasizes the fact that we needed to find the equations, not just the equation, we need to find the equations, right? So that means, therefore, we've got two equations. When we consider B being equal to 10, we get this. And when we consider B being equal to two, we get this. Okay, so those are our, that's complex familiar.